I was gonna say I, I feel more like like a like a like a, like a uh, airplane pilot. Airplane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Started. Started. All right, that started. This started. Tim, you good? Speaking of the mic. Check one two. That sounds good, friend. Hey, how's it going? Steve, how do I sound? Oh, you sound great. I think I sound good, dude. Yeah. We got his little sponsorship going. All right. Um. All right. Should we just fucking start it? Let's rip this yeah. jungle juice. Rip it. Yeah. yeah. Rip it and uh, <laughs> grip it first, though. It's Let's actually, go. It's actually, I was going to say, it's not actually very, it's not easy to hold. That's yeah. the first thing I noticed. It feels like a wet. We'll talk about that. Just... So let me do the intro and then we'll do oh, the okay. intro. All right. I had to start with your song, man. Let's go. All right, guys. Welcome to the Steve Driscoll Show. Fran's back. And we got a guest, Tim Bernard. He's a musician. He's hey, a cool dude. Tim. He's taller than both of us. Thanks, guys. It's not hard to be taller than me, but... I think you're the first guest who's taller than me. How tall really? are you? I'm, like, just shy of 6'3". Six, 6'3". Three. Six, three. Pull the bike a little more in front of your face. Just shy of 6'3"? So we're the same height. I'm so tall. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are fitted for 6'2 people, so... We'll back to back after a couple yeah. of these jungle juices. Hell yeah. This is gonna get... This is, like, gonna get intense pretty quick, I think. Oh, for sure. This is the Tim Bernard episode. The Tim Bernard, yeah, yeah, fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, that and these jungle juices. This is Tim Bernard's music playing right now. I know. It's, it was actually on my 2019 Top 100 Spotify list. It oh, made shit. the cut, dude. It made the cut. Dude, that's that's very cool. That's that, that's what it is. Those are always cool to get. Yeah. yeah. Like. It, this was a very legit song. I know all the words. Did you actually... So in the song, you said you say something about like you're driving and you're like you're afraid you may have hit a body or something? Yeah. Yeah. That was like... That was the, like, initial realization that, like, I had, like, you know, a, a condition, like, a OCD. Um, it just, like, I, I would, like, go out driving and hit, wow, we're, like, really good. No, get, dude, we're we're get in, bro. It's like, dude, <laughs> tell us about your depression. <laughs> All right, cool. I thought we were promoting jungle juice. Um, but, yeah, dude, I'm good for a little Friday night therapy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like, so, I, I don't know, I, I like started getting, it's called like hit and run OCD where like you get this fear that like when you hit a bump or like something in the road that like it could have been like a person or like, um, you know, anything like, and I would drive back in circles and like check to see and I was like, and it, I would talk to people like my family and be like, I would explain the situation, they would be like, what are you talking about? Like, there's just no way that's possible. Yeah, And I, that kind of like, was what ch- sort of triggered to me that like it was you know there was something going on up there um yeah exactly. like irrational thoughts exactly. no, I, mean, I, I get yeah, some of that stuff too up, yeah dude. That, that's what i was when i heard the song i, I was know like how, that, uh, that's why i made the top 19 I didn't for know me. how buzzwordy i could get yeah yeah, yeah. and then yeah, you know, just pull it a tiny bit more in front of your face i'm sorry to keep saying oh sorry right. and just like it's kind of going in and out i think i think that should be good okay. like, yeah, make it so your mouth's like always kind of in front of this thing yeah no it's good man it's just no, but that's you go so like you would basically convince yourself that like the worst possible thing could have happened. Yeah, it is. It's like very like all or nothing thinking. Like I really like catastrophized really like little things. And like the stereotypical thing is like, oh, I left the oven on or like I, you know, you, like, sorry, I, I can hear myself fading in and out. Yeah. I'm going to stay still. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just one example. I mean, and all the words that follow it, like you become debilitated, like you get so wrapped up in like the fear of like having harmed someone or, um, you know, been the cause of something like catastrophic. Like it just gets stuck up there and just like perpetuates to the point where it feels so real, even though when you kind of take a step outside of it, like it's pretty apparent that it's like all in your head. So yeah, that was kind of like, and that was a cool tune too, because I kind of kickstarted like the whole wave of writing songs specifically about mental health and, you know, realizing yeah. it didn't always have to be about like, you know, my ex and sad. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, it, did, uh, it does. It. Although lately, that's been the wave of my music. So. Yeah, dude, that's good. I mean, everyone says but maybe that means I'm doing better. I don't know. Exactly. Everyone's like Adele did great when she was, you know, dumped and stuff. Yeah. Coldplay dude was making his best music before Gwyneth Paltrow. For sure. So this is your time, man. You, uh, we were talking about this before. Uh, Tim actually canceled the hinge date to come on the show tonight. <laughs> so like that, you can make a song about that. Maybe she'll make a song about that. Maybe. A guy right. can- if she sees this, <laughs> Taylor, I'm sorry. I just, you know, duty calls. Taylor's but, a good name. Yeah. No, you should have went, bro. That was half the selling point. It yeah. was Taylor, and then she also was like a big Harry Styles fan and a 1D fan. That was like all we had going into the date. That's all you need. Um, that is all you need. I kept moving it because yeah, yeah. I was sick and... 
Um, still a little getting over it, but, um, and I like worked late one night and, and you know, as soon as you hit me up for the pot, I was like, Oh, she thinks you're lying. She thinks you're lying, but you have, now you have visual proof of like, look, this is where I was during the date. Yeah. Did you tell her that you were coming to a podcast? No, no. I was going to actually try to squeeze it in before the pod. I was like, oh. you, could you meet like at 5 p.m.? And this was like the third time I texted her, like changing the plan. And she just completely ignored it. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, like, maybe right. you should have told her. Just show her this clip. I'll make a clip. I'll, sp- I'll like do the good editing for this clip. All right. Yeah. yeah. Then I'll, 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 definitely, I'll follow up. Yeah. I'll just she, send her the video and be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was really this doing this. should have been us. She could have come to the pod. I was going to just could have come. Damn, she right. could have been sitting in that chair over there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Anyway, we got uh, two sponsors today. The first one is Juiced Boxes. Tim, hold up your juice box. Sure. So we're actually going to try these on the show. It's uh, it's Jungle Juice. has 15% alcohol, and it looks like he's marketed to children. So, I don't know. Parents, if you see these, be careful. Be very careful. Seriously. Yeah. I Va- feel like these will get you drunk. Vodka with natural flavors <laughs> and, and certified colors. Okay. <laughs> as opposed to non-certified Oh, colors. it's blue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not like it's natural. I didn't know they were certifying colors. Maybe this that's, maybe it's like a, up, like, I think it must be this thing, right? I'm UK poke thing. it right through. Poke like, in that eye. Like sun thing, you know? All right. I yeah. figured if we were, oh no. You, you spill it? No, I dr- I took a sip oh, of it. Dude, no, this that's is fine, like that's fine. dangerous. It like, tastes yeah. good? The second you sip it, you're <laughs> yeah. like, this is a problem. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is, this is, this reminds me of a Four loco. It shouldn't. brings me Back to yeah. sophomore year college. Yeah, like, like John Mayer concert, only drinking Four Locos, throwing up all over the lawn, and there's a couple <laughs> that was singing. That sounds super specific. Next, uh, I mean, it happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happened to me. All right, so that brings us to our second sponsor, Frosted Flakes. Oh. We were going to, Frosted Flakes asked us to rate these from good, more than good, to great. So okay. where, where, where did you rate them? <laughs> Wait, how is... Frosted Flakes affiliated with Jungle Juice. <laughs> I, 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 we brought them together. <laughs> I would say it's good. Like I wouldn't, I would, I, I wouldn't bring this to a pregame. I, I mean, maybe I would if they paid me, but uh, I'd, ra- I'd rather stick with beer. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you look really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but like it does taste good. Like, Maybe college kids would have more fun with them. It tastes oh, yeah. It tastes like a rum drink. And it's something that like if you want to black out, if like that's your goal, um then then drink like four of these. And, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think four. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's fifteen percent alcohol. What's a beer? Eight? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that's two beers, not, but like that's like a IPA. Yeah, <laughs> triple 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 IPA. Stick to the IPAs. Brooklyn, Brooklyn stuff. Yeah. I mean they they taste kind of good. Yeah, I don't. It's like if I if it wasn't like if they didn't have Toucan Sam on the fucking front, <laughs> and I'm not trying to. If shit you want on your it. face to be like super super hot, but they oh, do yeah. taste kind of good. If you're looking for like to be different and like maybe to a summer day drink, like if these were in a cooler at a summer day drink, I'd be like, I'll pick it up. I'll it's try. It's gotta it. be a gnarly hangover. I want to read the read what's in it, but I know the directions. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Jungle yeah. juiced fruit punch, vodka with natural flavors, certified colors. It doesn't taste like vodka. It tastes like rum. Yeah, I agree. I bought it on the internet. Well, I got it on the internet, and like they repaid me to to do this plug. But a sixteen year old kid waiting on the Venmo. Yes, I got it. <laughs> a sixteen year old kid could do it. Like they they you know no one checked my ID on it. They were oh. like, "What's your birthday?" I could. It's like one of those things. You That's the loophole. Oh, just really? Buy booze online. Yeah, but Did if you're you just, underage, don't do that. I'm not condoning underage no. drinking, yeah, dude. Bring it. The the, uh, the plug here, but. A crazy loophole in Postmates and Uber Eats. The radar. That oh, yeah. Just, just make a new kids. email. Because I'm a, like, I'm a, an avid Uber Eater. Oh, yeah. Uber it's, Eater. It's, it's, I get like texts from them more than like any girls or hinge that are just like, oh, you yeah. hungry? <laughs> like, Happy birthday, go? Tim. <laughs> it's dinner time. Where are you? <laughs> it's uh, raining out. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm, I mean, I'm. I'm not going to try that. I'm never not going to try that. <laughs> We're just giving like yeah. bunch of like illegal advice. The loophole episode would be a great episode. Yeah. That, like just 25 loopholes. Yeah. That would, yeah. That'd 25 be plugs and 25 loopholes. Yeah. That, Plug that, yourself. That would be very good. I've done that a couple times actually. I'm trying to think what I've what, done the, loophole. The, the yeah, yeah. 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 But like they, you can't abuse but it, it, but it, I guess. But it actually never came, so. Really? Yeah. Oh, the food didn't come. Yeah, Did yeah. you eat it? <laughs> you were too full. <laughs> I, dude, I, I literally had one bite and was oh, like, this so, is like unedible. Gotcha. So you so, like, found it out naturally, honestly, but yeah. you thought maybe I could do this again. Yeah, because I've I've done it when food didn't arrive and this time it did, but it was like as if it didn't because I literally put it right in the trash. It was disgusting. It was like four in the morning after like Halloween, you know? Yeah. 
So like it is what it is. But yeah. four in the morning after Halloween, what were you doing? Uh, well, it was like Saturday. I don't oh. know. I went to like a couple little shindigs. Oh, it was the Saturday before. I was gonna say so, it the Saturday before Halloween. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say so, Sunday was uh, was Halloween. <laughs> yeah, that'd be November first. Well, if you was up till four in the morning, that was Halloween. Yeah. Wow. Did you guys notice that this week it got like a? <laughs> were you guys more tired this week? Oh, dude, I'm a, like always exhausted. You're one of those guys. Since I moved, yeah. Tired guy. Uh, tired no, guy. I wasn't tired. Why? But Everyone I know besides you was tired this week. I really? think it was like the cold weather change or some shit. Yeah, dude, it went from like. Being able to wear a t-shirt to like my winter jacket. Like yeah. I feel like there was no. I don't have an in-between jacket. Like warning. Yeah. I, I fucking. I look legit. I kind of get seasonal depression. <laughs> like yeah. when the sun goes down, I don't feel good. I I, I for sure do. Yeah. I, anyone who says summer's not their favorite season is full of shit. Or they're just, they're ignoring the facts. I don't like how hot it gets in the summer though. I like the heat. I don't like 95 degree heat. It's too much. Well in the city like it's. Yeah, it's, it's a bear. Subway and shit. Yeah. And I will say, like, living in LA, like, it was strange because everyone raves about, like, it being sunny, like, year round. But I, be, like, coming from the East Coast, I was, like, longing for, like, a little cold weather. Yeah. Like, a little rain. You want an excuse Good to stay, in the, stay inside sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like, you'd wake up, like, hungover on a Sunday. It was, like, a perfect 10 day. I'd yeah. just, like, fuck. I have to, I have to, <laughs> fuck, I have to go have fun. I want to do nothing yeah. today. Yeah, like, exactly. Is, yeah. When I was in uh, San Diego, I felt the same exact way. Where? Just like, you That's want right. That, you want I thought that you were shit. still there. I had no idea you were in Brooklyn. Some people were texting me eight months after, being like, hey, I'm in San Diego. Where are you at? And I'm like, dude, I've been in <laughs> New Jersey for so long. Dude, like, yeah. I, Tim, how, how long were you living there? And I was you there. Move, when did you move here? I, I've been here for almost seven months. Um, I was in LA for two years, pretty much, including like a, like a lot of the pandemic, too. Um, but... Yeah, it was, Were I you, don't know, the pandemic kind of like, I feel like I would still be out there if like the pandemic didn't happen. Did you move there way. Did you move there for work or did you move there for music? What did you do? I moved there for music. I also was like living home and I just wanted to like a change, you know, and I felt like moving right to New York City would be a lot. Just like having visited here every week, I was just like so like yeah. you know, tough on the wallet and like exhausting and I was just like okay I feel like I need and it was good like I needed to go out and get my independence a little bit and like I think the but the music was a big piece too like it was a natural kind of either LA or New York but I always knew New York was the end destination I just think like LA was a good like detour in the intro but what was I gonna say I think I in hindsight like going to LA when I did was maybe a bit like premature just because you know, I, I didn't have, I like, I had, I didn't have, like, a song that, like, blew up or, like, I, I didn't have this, like, crazy following that I could go into and be, like, a desirable person. Because there is a, a sense to L.A. that's, like, you know, it, and it's, you know, it's not like, oh, you need this amount of followers to, like, be relevant. But, like, there is a piece of that where it's, like, you know, you, you're, you're following and, like, your, I guess, notoriety or how well known you are in the in the sort of industry is um, is important, but I bet. you can fall to the wayside quickly. Like in the same vein that like that creative energy is very present in the city, and there's a lot of people doing what you do. It's sort of intimidating because you're like you realize how many people you're stacked up against. So I've become really like a bedroom studio guy, where I'm just like, okay, like you know, I can, I don't it, it, like I don't need to. I've been collaborating a lot more, but I don't like need to be in any specific place to like do well in this industry. Yeah. Like you can make you know? a banger out of your bedroom. Yeah, hundred percent. I but think so. I also think too, um, you know, just going back to say, when you were saying that you thought you were maybe too young to go out there. It's like you you got to you're, you're you got to be too young to start <laughs> to start anywhere. Really, you're always you're always too young, and I don't think you would have gotten to finding out that you're more of this bedroom guy. You know that that's your feel, right? Oh it's yeah, like you got Like you probably went out there. This is an assumption, but you probably went out there and it was probably like, "I'm gonna make a fucking banger," right? And and get like and 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 become like a you know it's some something in pop or something that's like you know in light. You, you, we all do it. We all do the same shit. You yeah, know what I mean, sure. But then you realize that's me. That's not me. But then that's where you find, and that's where other people find you. It's still yeah. part of the growth. Yeah. No, it's it still made you grow in a certain way. And I always say I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it back. Like that wasn't me saying like I wish I. I never went out because I do think like there a lot of good came from going out there. And like, I think if I was here in New York city versus LA, like 
I would have gotten caught up in like the social scene and like, you know, the drinking life and like the craziness a lot more and really not had a, as much focus as I did in LA on music and like making sure I was like putting out covers and like writing tunes and, you know, working on my production. So I did like make some strides that I think I, you know, I may not have made, um, had I not like moved out to a place where I was sort of, like I said, like kind of independent and like, I, you know, I knew people out there and I was like, still, still had a good time. Like I definitely, um, wasn't just like grinding 24 seven, but I don't, regret like not anything from the LA move and really any decision I've made as far as like my life and career and all that. Oh yeah. I mean like your initial plan is rarely how it's going to fucking go. I mean, we remember yeah. graduating college. We, we thought we were going to do other shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we, we've had so many like plans, Fran and I, and then like, how's that juice box, Tim? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tim yeah. double shout I'm out juice box. Rock, yeah. yeah. I'm going back to it. Yeah. I mean, I'll do one. I'll do one. Yeah. All right. I'll do so one. now re-rank it. All right, is it good? More than good? Or is it's it It's getting great? better. It's definitely not getting worse. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It's uh, more than good. not sober anymore. It's more than good. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of this episode, they're going to be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I will. We, shout yeah. out Frosted Flakes. Shout out juice boxes. <laughs> So now, all right, so before you were making a lot of music, I feel like you were putting out, like, a decent amount of songs in 2019. Yeah. And now you're working with that girl, Lauren Smith. Is that her name? Yeah, Lauren Spencer Smith. Lauren Spencer, LSS. Yeah. Um, so, wait, what do you, are you songwriting with her? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you're a songwriter. I am, I am, yeah. I've I've gotten into the, so I was actually John Vincent, uh, JV. JV Quout, my uh, roommate, my neighbor in college, my neighbor. Yeah. Sophomore year. That's wait. He told you that your neighbor. Oh, your neighbor sophomore year. Yeah. Our neighbor, junior year. Oh, for real? Just I everyone's know. neighbor. Wow. I, 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 <laughs> John Vince um, is your local <laughs> neighbor. Your, local your music neighbor. producing neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, he was like, he was always like, he was still on like his rap game. Like he was trying to like, he was like putting out beats. Oh like yeah. We watched one or like uh, earlier this week, and it's just it's just so funny how like his progression of like. His, his initial plan, bro. Yeah. Every, his initial plan was to be a fucking rapper. Now he's a producer. should have him on here, actually. He's I would. We, we're tight, yeah. It was weird because he called me, like, in the airport leaving L.A. And I always tell him about this. And I was kind of going back. And part of me was, like, feeling like I, I gave up a little. Like, I was like, oh, I'm, like, I'm leaving. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be closer to home. And, like, my only fear was, like, am I giving up on music by leaving L.A.? And he called, and he was like, Hey, like literally in the airport waiting for my flight back to Boston. He's like, Hey, like, I don't know if you're going to be in the East coast anytime soon, but I have like a couple of, um, a couple of like artists or artists in the making that want to write songs. And I, you know, I, I feel like you could be a great asset. And it was Lauren Spencer Smith. And then another artist he works with, um, and manages Drake McCain, who's like more country. So I, the first week I came home, I like I, I didn't live here yet, and I I bust up, and um, we started like writing a little bit in um, his kind of home studio, and we had like a few ideas for Drake, and um, then he came like Drake came to town. We recorded them, and we were like Dan like there were a couple of tunes that we felt really strongly about, and he still hasn't put stuff out, but we have um, you know I, I wrote country, which was like very outside my comfort zone because I was like all you know, pop kind of eighties, like synth shit. Um, and then that kind of just started our relationship. And then Lauren, <coughs> excuse me, came a uh, couple of months after and we got in the studio with her and that was like a lot more of my vibe of like kind of broken hearted, like poppy acoustic love songs, like sort of Clinton Kane, but like she's got like an Adele, like, like her voice is, she's awesome. She's legit. Ridiculous. She gets millions of views on Spotify, yeah. millions of listens. She's awesome. Yeah. yeah. She's nuts. When I, when I, I was following your Instagram and you put, uh, these little, you know, the 10 second things out. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess in your, is it your apartment? Whose apartment is that? That's JV's JV's apartment. Um, I, when I first heard her singing, I, I was, I, my jaw, like I, my mouth opened. I was like, <laughs> yeah. uh, what? Well, Dude, it's like wow, this yeah. guy. It's <clears throat> and this, this girl. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was watching your Instagram. Dude, you're the yeah. guy. This guy. You're the guy. <laughs> this guy and this girl. They're both. They're both doing it. Yeah. No, it was like in person. It's surreal. Like it's so effortless. Like she's just it, like. And they were both came out of American Idol, which I forgot. Oh to wow. Mention. They were both like American Idol, like top twenty, top ten. Oh legit. Candidates. And yeah. JV fucking. How did JV get them on board? <laughs> 
Dude, I don't know really. Like JV's just a, like a master. Like he was their worker. dentist. <laughs> is he a dentist still? Yeah. Is he a dentist? <laughs> he is. He's yeah. So maybe he was their dentist thing. or something. Yeah. No, I I wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> but um, no, he's just I don't know. He's he's good. Like he's good at like just making contact like with the right people at the right time and um. Yeah, back to that. Like, do you ever, do you ever kind of think like, damn, like how uh, what's the word? Um, serendipitous. Like the fact that you were literally leaving LA, you're in the airport. That's like out of a movie. Yeah. Like the guy's like, is. hey, you ever come back to the East Coast? Then I'm the episode John ends. And the, he's, exactly. What's her face? Kate Back and Sale. Is that what the yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's Christmas. Movie. I, I know what the movie is. Yeah. But yeah. like, that's kind of like the start of a success story. Like when there's shit like that's happening, like it's like in 20 years you'll be looking back. Rate it. Rate it. <laughs> Rate it's going it. up. It's like it was high seven. Now it's like low eights. Eight point two. By the end, this is gonna be a ten. <laughs> ten. But like, do you ever like? I feel like I the, can sleep here, right? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, this, you can sleep on this couch, the podcast <laughs> couch. I'll put the mics away. Yeah. But like, I feel like all like these great things that like tend to happen in either, like my life in people's lives in general. Like, there's some serendipitous moments. Yeah. And that's a and very you serendipitous moment. Like, you are leaving LA and you were feeling down and JV yeah. fucking crowd calls you. Yeah, dude. It's, it, it really is. I mean, this is like, if we want to segue from like... Go ahead. Viv Audi's manifestation. Like, I'm not a manifester, but I'm a big <laughs> manifester. I'm a big woman a woman a fester. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I'm a big like fake guy. I'm a big like... There's definitely like little little winks that have happened in my life, like little nudges in the right direction. And that was one that I was like, okay, like that was one that made me realize like I was making the right decision to leave LA. And then when the Lauren Spencer Smith song came together and she posted that TikTok and it like blew up and you know, we started like, she started hearing from record labels and like, now I'm like attached to this big song. Like that was when I was like, okay, now like I know I'm in the right place. So like, there's just been little moments like that. And that's really what keeps you going. Like just those, those little like pushes along because it's really easy. Like you with comedy, like I give stand up comics way more credit than musicians. I think that's like, and it's, that's why I get nervous with these types of things. Cause it's sort of like you're getting in front of a bunch of people and it's like, they're just like, okay, make me laugh. Like, be yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas like with music, it's kind of like music is generally like, if you're not terrible, like it's going to be okay. Like with comedy, like you really need to, but, um, yeah, I just think it's tough in those kind of crafts. Like you just, you need to take the little victories and they need to be enough to like motivate you to like keep going and, you know, um, keep working. Cause once you get a taste of like a little bit of success, you're like, okay. It, yeah, and I'm not, I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Like when I, when I like get a, I, I got like a few TikToks go like very viral and like that was kind of me being like, all right, I'm doing the right thing. I got to like, yeah. for like our first few years, like kind of back to what I was saying, it was like, we would try so many different things. We were like making like skits, we're making this. I was like, you know, I, I have a rapping microphone. I was like, maybe I'll make music. Yeah. But I was like, once I that, that started that working, you, hell yeah. Like keep all that shit going. Yeah. Hell yeah. We're about to freestyle in a minute, but if you can, do you know how to? <laughs> no. Yes, you do. JV. He's again, a liar. Dude, you got to get JV on. He's here. a liar. But, um, like, it's good to know, like, I like that song. <laughs> But like, it's good to like get that, like those moments because yeah, like exactly like you said, it makes you feel like I'm in the right spot. I'm doing the right thing. It gives you confidence to like stick in this one lane and be like, this is what I got to do. Yeah. hundred percent. That, that, that shit Definitely. is important. I feel yeah. the same way. When For did sure. you, when did you like, did you ever learn how to sing or did, were, were you just good at it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I still do. Like, I still don't think that like, um, especially like after working with Drake and like, like actually like um trained singers like yeah. legit singers I, I don't feel like i'm that crazy of a singer i think a lot of my strength is in writing melody and i i guess lyrics i mean i i think i'm okay at like writing lyrics that are but like so you hit notes like that's yeah the, no I, I, you yeah. know what i mean now I'm too close. Now you'd be good the whole time. Ooh, that feels good. See, that's, I need oh, to do it. Shit, dude. I was like, I got to do it. I got to change Are we going to be able to hear me like this? Yeah, yeah it's going to be good enough. That's wo- like that's wildly better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wish I just fucking did it from the start. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess. Because so like, I don't know. I've I've not like follow like I've not fanboyed. I've not like listened to you over the years and like, right. but I, I've heard your like stuff from college and then I've heard your like recent stuff and I listened to your stuff on Spotify <laughs> And like, there's a progression that I hear from like when you started 
to where you are now. Yeah, that's music, by the way. Yeah, what the fuck yeah. is oh, that? Yeah. I always yeah. do it. Setting the tone. <laughs> We're about to ask you some serious questions. <laughs> Shit. What's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be making me, you said you were going to make me comfortable, and now you're. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's that's what oh, I no. that's what I fucking do, bro. This is aspirational music. Yeah. So I, you, repeat your question. So my that. my question, ma'am. No, you answered it pretty much. But it was just like, did you learn at one point, or or did you, did you just keep singing? So I took one vocal lesson, and it was, I, I don't know. I think the 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 singing thing just came with like <laughs> it's like some it's Friday night lights. So like, Rip, <laughs> fucking street. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Clear eyes, <laughs> full horse. Um, I think the singing just kind of like accompanied the the instruments. Like, I would just learn tunes and like sing along with them. And it, it really wasn't until like college that I like started singing sort of in front of people. I was always like hammered on Jungle Juice. <laughs> and uh, it, it, like people started being like, "Oh, okay, you're like not." You're not bad. Like, you probably sing pretty well. Like, you know. Those are I just did it more. Yeah, for sure. Your friends being like, yo, you can actually do this. Yeah, I mean, I got to shout out, like, the twins, uh, Corey and Ronan. They were real. I mean, and same with Jack and and Perk and Bo. Like, all of them were really big um, supporters and just, like, really pushed me to, like, put my music out there. Like, the first B-Room sessions that I put out, like, my, my senior year, which was, like, I just played covers in, like, the bathroom. I remember that, that. was um, a, I had the video and like I really did like I, I watched it and I was like it it you know I, it sounded pretty good but I was just so like freaked out about like the prospect of it being like out there um, and like people seeing it and Corey um, actually like posted it to Facebook without like like I sh- I sent him the individual video and was like don't share this anymore. and then he just fucking <laughs> wow. posted it and I remember being in the library I was like with my ex girlfriend at the time and I like. We were just sitting there, and I hadn't really looked at my phone, and I looked, and I had, like, a bunch of messages that were all, like, yo, like, I didn't know you could sing, or, oh, this, like, this, that video is so cool, like, and that was another moment where I was just, like, all right, like, this is, this is pretty cool. Was that the first moment? Um, that was the first moment where I was, like, maybe I could, like, do music in some capacity yeah those are big it's like we had yeah. good friends who were like they're really encouraging <laughs> like, much you're funny you're this we have friends who are like friend you need to go to hollywood and be a fucking actor you know what i mean it's good to have those friends oh yeah so like were you nervous you like, them. before putting out like content like that because i can relate to that in, the, in many ways of like you're nervous about how people are gonna judge it and stuff yeah for sure oh yeah i was super nervous that like just about what people were gonna think Laurel was such a small campus too like if it was shitty like yeah you know i but <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's showing a, a side of you that no one's seen. So it's just really like vulnerable. And it, I mean, I, I may not have put it out if it wasn't for someone like Corey or like just kind of throwing it out without me knowing. And like, you know, and my family has been the same way, like kind of pushing me to go to open mics and like just put myself out there. Cause I feel like you have a very, you have a very supportive, sorry I'm going to cut you off, but you have a very supportive family too. Like yeah. I have, just my support system in general. <laughs> this that's music's big. perfect for this now. Dude, that's, like, what, that's, that's what it is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my man, you're going to get me all choked up with that's like, what it's the all about, bro. If, you don't, if like, you don't cry, this was not a good episode. <laughs> if you don't cry, I'm not putting <laughs> Dude, it out, bro. Steve, <laughs> love my family, bro. Steve uh, told me before. I'm deleting Spotify episode. from your phone if you don't, put that, <laughs> if you don't cry. <laughs> but no, I, I do have an incredible sports system. And like, they... I mean, they're just like... They're so wrapped up in like every release and and everything I, I mean i would when i was writing when i started writing songs i would bounce everything off of my my parents and my sisters that was like the first line of defense where i was like what do you think and their opinions were everything you know like it was make or break of like whether i would release it or not and like i remember just like slaving over a song for like hours and hours and showing it to them and they would be like it's a little too like slow and then i would have to like re-record it and be like your voice like you know then they would give a little notes and i would always be so like you know critical to it yeah i would just be like so and i would show them something they'd be like oh i really like it i'd be like but you don't you don't love it like I, that and that's the ocd too i would just be like i like i just needed the people that i cared about most in the world to like resonate and oh, feel yeah. it like before if I was going to put it out and same with like my friend, like I, I have a good circle of like people I can bounce music off of. And, um, yeah, man, my, my dad's like all, all over it. Like he's 
the amount of like <laughs> a fisherman's view. <laughs> a fisherman's Bro, view. I see you, man. He knows me. Shout out to Fishy's he's, View. He seems like a good guy. Yeah, no, he's great, man. He's promoting his books on the side. He's like, that's the creativity, I guess, in the family. But he's he's uh, like an avid Instagrammer now, and he like, dude, I like, we'll just randomly like be on someone's profile and it'll be like followed by Fisherman's View. Like, me. so it'll he be follows like, me. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I was like, who is this guy? Like, oh, it's Tim Bernard's dad. <laughs> And like people would be like, your dad's always like one of the first people to see, see my, my story. story. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm like, yo. And it's not, dude. It's like, it, he, he's just very like. He's on the app. It's not, it's not weird. He's it's on weird. there, baby. Yeah. He's on there. Good. I appreciate but it. But he's a huge, huge uh, supporter. And uh, yeah. And it's good that they don't, don't just be like, yo, so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot no, of people probably have that, that right. There's that portions are just like, it's so good. Yeah. My friends are sometimes like, it needs this. Sometimes a little too much. And I'm like, shut your goddamn mouth. Yeah. Like, Cause it's sort of, it's also like, you know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Some people, like, they way. just like to have an opinion on some things. Right. For sure. I'm not saying that's what your family's like, but like for you answered like a lot of my bigger questions. Not going to lie. So way to go. With it. <laughs> Give me a real one, dude. Oh, dude, I just you love, don't want that. Love, bro. Like the first question was like, such a hard hitter like i mean it was like about the song ocd but it was also like explain your condition and then like everything else was like the music <laughs> was there i feel like the, the episode should be reversed yeah bro right there was there uh right for you, bro. tim was there something that that like not to go back on it or harp on it at all but was there something that triggered that was there like a event like like did you run over something or somebody once? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not to be a dick. I, to laugh. I was laughing yeah. at that. I was just yeah. like, dude, yeah. you're trying to get me to like admit to my crimes on this podcast. <laughs> you just you're said the Uber Eats it. one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know you got that food at 4 a.m. <laughs> dude, and the crazy thing is my OCD would actually like attach onto that. It's like, <laughs> no, dude. I hope that fucking halal guys was good. <laughs> 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 but um, I guess... Man, I mean, I think the, the, uh, like, I never, no, I, I like, <laughs> to answer your question, I've never hit anyone, like, I've never, like, harmed any, like, none of the things that, like, I've created in my, my mind, like, really happened, I think they're just, the OCD just takes, like, a small detail and, like, fabricates this whole narrative that, like, you... It's sort of like it gets like out of your control at a certain point. So I think the hit and run thing, like it really came out of nowhere. Like, I think I always had little things like I would like repeat words and like just random little like side effects of, of OCD and like living with it. But I think driving and I like never drive anymore, which is actually quite ironic. I mean, I live in New York, but I also just like even in L.A., I didn't have a car. But I think, you know, like I had just a few moments where like there were clear indications that like nothing happened, whether it was in a car or like, I'm trying to think of another like good example. There's like no evidence, but you have it in your thought and your brain's going to the worst case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a bump in the road at night. Um, and, <laughs> and you, in, in your song, you say like you, you know, you're feeling a certain symptom and you Google it and then you think you have cancer. Yeah. A lot of people can relate to that. Oh, a lot totally. Of the WebMD yeah, yeah, vibe. Yeah. 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 I, well, actually that probably came before the, yeah, I think that's a, I think that's probably like pretty natural for people to have. Like a lot of people do that. I do that. Are you yeah. like I, I was 100%. I, that's that why song. and that's why I didn't really think it was like Yeah. That wasn't the clear indication that like I had proper OCD. I mean, I the other hit and run like the other thing that I did when I would like if I thought I hit someone in the road with a car or something, I would like search for articles like the next day, like police reports being like, you know, Really? Male, oh damn! Male, twenty-five year old, like ran really? over. Oh damn! And I would drive back the next day and look for like, so like, obviously, like the Web and D thing. Like, I, you know, I convinced myself I had cancer like a million times. Yeah. And, like, you know, if it like hurt a little bit when I peed, I was like, well, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> I got AIDS. <laughs> this is Fuck. how it happens. Oh man, this is how it ends. And um, yeah, I think the the driving thing. I think alcohol, like moving into sort of later, like alcohol, definitely like did not make things like I at that point when I first started getting those like little ruminations and intrusive thoughts about driving and hitting someone like I didn't really do anything about it I was just like okay like that's kind of fucking weird like but whatever and then I think drinking and like getting into that whole culture of like drinking to the point where like I don't remember things or like I brown out a little bit or I would start to fill in the gaps with like having done something terrible like did I say something like 
terrible to a friend or like, you know, to a girl, like, you know, was I weird and like, you know, I don't know. Worst case just, scenario thoughts that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Also, I just jump to the worst conclusion. Not for nothing. But I think that those thoughts mean that you're just genuinely a good guy. 100%. Right? Thanks, it's like, man. It's like... You're well, worried that you could have done something terrible. That's, that's how I... That's, yeah. how, that's, how what I, that's what I tell myself. I'd like I to think do, so. I, I mean, really I think... Awful thing. No, that's, I'm just <laughs> I think that's the reason that they're so, like, yeah. sticky and so, like, yeah. troubling is because they're, like, this is, like, sort of the thing that, like, I, you know, my, my first therapist out of school would say is, like... All right, 50 minutes in. They yeah. were so out of line with like who I am as a person. Like the thoughts were just so contrary to like my values and like who I've tried to be. And like, that's why they're just, they're so troubling to me because I, I just know I'm not the person that like my OCD tries to make me into. So, and it did, it kind of created this monster where I was like, by senior year, I was so debilitated and depressed from it and like wrapped up in shit that I thought was real and things that I thought people thought about me that I, I couldn't really like I wasn't myself like I remember literally my friends being like we miss like the old you and shit mm. you oh no at? bro what alright you're in this camera so we still got it and we're still recording but that camera that's the shitty camera is that a battery yeah but you're still in this one you're still there yeah move over okay <laughs> but yeah, bring the mic with you. But yo, yeah, don't we got the audio and you'll be in it. We're still posted. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm just like, of course, it's when I open my soul. Fuck, it's usually on a friend. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told Stephen, I was like, I don't think I should be in the gray chair. Uh, no, 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 that's a joke. That's a joke. No, 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 no. It just happened Dude, to I'm work gonna out. Honest, yeah. when we walked up and, we, and you, <laughs> when we walked up and you were like, you're the gray chair. I was like, oh. Oh fuck! Okay, cool. <laughs> well, we figured. Fran, I like want to make Fran feel noticeably a downgrade from this like, cool <laughs> retro couch. We just want like the guest is in a different chair. It's like Larry David. I'm like, buying a third camera. <laughs> but you you're still in. The, like you can see yourself, right? Yeah. 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 Damn, bro. Also, mo the I get more listens on. Uh, oh, yo, people are gonna watch this shit. Stop! It was not a big deal. It happened yeah. last time. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah, I'm not it sure when it went out. Yeah, yeah, but, I, but, it, was, but it was me. But it but was like the last ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like on purpose. Right? Yeah, exactly. I, well, no. So, so when Viv was here, I was like, "Oh, maybe I should just come sit between you guys then." And then everyone was like, "No, <laughs> no." Viv, Viv said, "Yeah," and I was like, "No, you're good." I, I just said what you said. Like, you're in this camera. Yeah. No, I'm. I, but like, yeah. Then there's one thing you said that really stuck with me about like your OCD and shit is like what your first therapist said was like, "It's so far from like the person that you are," and that's yeah. why it bothers you so much. <laughs> exactly. Like, dude. Like, no. Like, she was I, great, dude. Like, I. I did it through uh, the Boston University Anxiety Center. And prior to that, like, I had done, like, a bunch of, like, kind of um, private practice therapists. And OCD is, like, so specific that, like, you can pick up on whether a therapist, like, knows their shit when it comes to OCD so quickly. Like, um, and I detected, like, so many. I had, like, four or five therapists before that that were just, like, just not it. And, like, that shit, like, really, like, changed my li like changed my life <laughs> but like it it really like it made me like fucking functional again like going to that and like you know that's fucking amazing dude that that's a dude people should fucking go to it yeah i agree i have one be you anxiety yeah. i was i have a psychiatrist Jungle i go see blokes. i see somebody yeah that's it that's all i'll say it's not about me. No, dude. But, I've, I want it to be a little more. No, no, no. no, no it's good. It's, it's, it's a good thing. It's good. I mean, I think it's as many people that are willing to admit it, it should be like a normal lot. Like it should be a normal thing. Like it's, you know, I, I know it's like very cliche, the whole like, oh, there's a stigma attached, but it really, there really is. And I think the more we can talk about it openly, like I say to people all the time, like it should be the equivalent of getting a physical, like you go to a physical and get your physical health checked, you should go to therapy and get your mental health checked because it's just as important, yeah. if not more. I see one too. I never told anyone. Oh, wow. Steve. Yeah. Congrats. I was like, you know, you guys are Give saying this. I might as well say it. Hey, yeah, welcome so to the club. Back. I might come to that couch now. Yeah. You know, you hey, know, man. You if know, the mic stretched, I would. 
But you know what's funny about the the whole the whole thing? It's like everyone. It's like a, it's like a hidden people like like to hide it. Yeah. I like every once in a while drop like a, I saw mine. It's not kind of interesting. Yeah. And like you did as, in the car. And I was like, like a, I, yeah. yeah. It's almost it's for me. It's it's become like a little a little social class thing. It's like yeah. oh, I have a psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> I have a psychiatrist. Yeah, we're special. <laughs> Tim, look at that camera. And say we are special. We're special. <laughs> yeah, dude. We have psychiatrists and we have jungle juice. <laughs> This is yeah. This is about wow. Cheers therapy. to that. Hey, yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers to therapy, man. Hey, therapy. I never. I know. I think only my mom knew this one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 these are more than good. Oh, they're dude. fucking great. Yeah, they're great. Come these on, are great. On, these are great. Touch my butt. <laughs> oh, these are torture. <laughs> Get that. People are gonna think that's a sound effect. Yeah, they're gonna think that's from the soundboard. Yeah. Man. Let's check what the soundboard has for this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jungle right. juice. <laughs> we should go out later. Hell Dude, yeah. your tongue is fucking. Is my tongue red? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys it's, it's look, that. What are they called? Look great. What kind of colors does it have? <laughs> you guys, you certified guys look colors. Funny. By the way, you guys look awesome. <laughs> I wasn't sure in college, but now I'm sure. <laughs> wow, dude. See, dude, that's that's wow. So this episode. Was it, we all have fucking uh, psychiatrists, therapists, whatever the fuck? Yeah, is. yeah, yeah. We're we're we're, Dude, we're, high, we're high class. Trust. That's why we're on TV. This is TV. Is it TV? Yeah, we're on Fox yeah. Five. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Steve told you. But ABC Family. We're pretty big. Are we we're, live. This we're, is this yeah. is an episode of Seventh Heaven. Actually, prime time shit. shit. Yeah. It's prime time shit. It feels it feels very legit. Like it does. Oh, it does, it does for feel, sure. It feels real. I was gonna do some uh, would you rather's, but like it would help with the camera. Is there? Should we give them one for the fans anyway? Do a couple. All right, yeah. You want to hear a fucked up one? <laughs> yeah, dude. You, you know, give me some games. Like we we gotta lighten it up. We've just been talking therapy. Oh, you want to lighten it up, huh? Yeah. All right. And I see you Yeah. All right. This is this is more specifically for you. So try to get like in the camera looking. Try to get as like much in the camera. Pull the mic towards you. Yeah. Just pull the tape. Yeah, pull the tape. The tape. That's called the tape now. Yeah. Uh, Tim, you're you're gonna have to come on again. I think you're a good guest. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Plus, you live so I close up every side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's such no, an yeah, easy yeah. commute. Yeah, we gotta. Plus, like everyone's moving out of the city. It's good to just get like we got. I gotta build up my uh, my squad again. Yeah. I just no, brought, I, I needed dude, friends. I, I'm not like even recording I said, this. I just I needed friends. No idea you were here. Hell yeah. Um, it's good to know you are. So. All right, yo. So Tim, would you rather become a one hit wonder like Gavin DeGraw? Be worth ten million dollars, or never make money in music. But when you die, you're as big as the Beatles. Oh, oh shit! That's, yeah. that's great. Um, I mean, I'm dead. You know, that's what like, I'm saying. I don't, I don't get to enjoy any of the fruits of the lab. Yeah, <laughs> Gavin DeGraw is worth fourteen million dollars, by the way. I don't want to be anything other than oh, that's a smash. I mean, be. sorry. Love that song. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> stop. <laughs> you start, I'll, I'll end it. <laughs> yeah, we, Brad's still just like, I think I'd rather voice be. voice lessons or not, dude? <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it three lessons or one? <laughs> I think I'd rather, I think I'd go Gavin DeGraw. Right I would probably go Gavin DeGraw. I mean, that, that's like the selfish move, I guess. But I'm I've always selfish. said, well, it is because it's like, if you have a, if you're like the Beatles and you have this catalog of music, oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. If you're like the Beatles and you have this like catalog of music that like lives on without you, like that's giving something. And the Beatles, like their shit's love, man. Like they 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 bring people happiness. Facts. So like, it's sort of the the question is sort of like, do you want to give other people happiness for like generations, or do you want to give yourself happiness for like your lifetime? Or do you, like, you want to live lavishly, or do you want to like? Be great, because that that means you were truly great in your when you made music. Yeah, not that Gavin DeGraw's not great. That's a, that song's a fucking dude. It's banger. just it's hilarious to hear Gavin DeGraw and the Beatles in like <laughs> the same the sentence. Fucking, yeah, I bet Gavin. Degras, I bet Gavin DeGraw has said like I would love to mention the same sentence as the Beatles. Well, Gavin DeGraw, <laughs> you just manifested that shit because I did it, baby. Come on the yeah. pod, dude. You can yeah. at least come on the pod. That's if we right. get Gavin DeGraw on the pod. You're coming. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a fourth mic because we could do it. <laughs> yeah, dude. And a fourth camera could yeah. be sick, too. Easily money. In in uh, scenarios like this one that you just presented, I like to ask myself, what would Jesus do? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus would not want to be anyone other than anyone he's trying to be lately. So he would choose Gavin DeGraw. Uh, dude, I think I disagree. I think Jesus would choose the Beatles route. He, I mean, he is the like, Beatles he is that. like religion. 
Jesus died on the cross and then, you know, the Bible and everything was the Passion of Christ, the movie was made. Like he became famous yeah. after he died. Have you seen that movie? I saw the whipping scene and I was like, I don't need to watch this anymore. <laughs> this yeah. is this is just this is like a Saw movie. Yeah. It's like Jigsaw. It's like it where's is. Jigsaw? He's coming out now. Like it was almost like that bad at like Saw and Passion of the Christ. And like break like the there were some movies that were like really like cool and edgy to watch when you were like young. You were like, dude. Yeah. You like going to school, you're like, yeah, I don't watch the nailing on the cross. <laughs> My mom let me watch it. I don't. I didn't have one nightmare. <laughs> Ethan, I mean, like, uh, I don't know. Like, now we're all gonna have <laughs> dreams. Just watch it for the the bragging rights. The weird thing. So in the last podcast, we talked about Fran giving a best man speech at my brother's wedding. In my dream, you give a best man speech at my brother's wedding. Did oh, I, I was like, did, did, did I? Did, did no, I? You said did all I, wrong things. Did, did I read <laughs> off? Of the, did I read off the script? Or did I just say off cuff? So it was before the wedding, but you were, we were going over it as a group. Like, oh, so it's like a rehearsal, a rehearsal dinner. Yeah, and you killed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, but to answer your question, um, oh, the more I think about it, I've I've always wanted like a fourteen to have it dollars. both ways. Yeah. No, I, I'm not really a money guy. That's the thing. Like, I'm not really like a luxury. Like, I need to live this like lavish lifestyle. I think like I don't know because of that reason I would probably go with the Beatles thing because I don't know. I've always I've always like said I wanted us like just one song that like had lasting power that would like per- exceed my lifetime like H- how many songs at, ju- at you least said one. one Gavin DeGraw has that <laughs> <laughs> that song's a big so I'm kind of in the middle though yeah. like I don't need it during my lifetime gotcha but <sighs> that's Damn. a tough question bro that's yeah, why I brought you hard. here I want don't, to keep be you up. don't be cute, so, like, Tim. Take the money. Take the money and take run. Take the money. Uh, what would a fisherman's right. view tell you to do? I'll take the uh, the cherry. Also, What's apologies that? to my dad for saying the uh, billion dollar thing that he told me to take it and I could never see him again. He yeah. probably forgives you. Yeah, he forgives me now, but he wanted me to apologize the next episode. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. He for- also, I didn't think you would actually do that. It's just for the content, Papa. Papa. <laughs> Papa. Since we're talking about last episode shit. It's just for your dad um, at this point. It's one camera. Just like, yeah. (laughs) Dad. This is just for my dad. (laughs) It's a dad episode. He's a big fan. Yeah. Never mind. He's my biggest fan. What do you Um, mean saying never mind? Yeah, I didn't really answer it. I guess like, what what would you do? Would you do the Gavin DeGraw thing? I would do the, I would do the Gavin DeGraw thing. Yeah. Give me the money. I just want the money. I want, it's not that I want the money. I just want to do things with money. Like I don't want, it's not like I want to buy a sports car, but like I want to like, I w- so some, like, the same way the same way that you want a legacy like I think that like you need money for a legacy for whatever reason unless you're you know Gandhi right right but, yeah I feel like even Gandhi was like a closet billionaire I don't know <laughs> he probably yeah. was yeah. Probably same yeah. birthday as me so yeah, yeah. Doing all right. but but <laughs> seriously I just, I just feel like you need the money to like create something like a lasting empire yeah. and like that's the reason why I would take it I wouldn't like take it and run away with it though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like buy a bunch of sports cars and like an island or something and just go sit on it by myself. That's right. not what I want to do. But like, I would invest in some good shit, something that's yeah. gonna like take me far, further than like I thought I, you know, I would have. I would have been able to if I didn't have the money. Also, live the best life possible. I think that's fair. Like, I want to live and, my best life possible. I do care about other people. Yeah. we all do. Yeah, but like, I, I would go Gavin DeGraw route for sure. Because I, I want to experience it, but Gavin DeGraw did nothing with it, though. That's the thing. That's yeah. like the, that's like it's like well, that's it's like the thing. Take you the money and run, or like, do, yeah. So we don't that's know a stipulation that, that we need to make. Yeah, but we do know that like Gavin DeGraw hasn't made any more waves in the music industry. I don't know what else he's done. I, mean, I don't know what he's up Chariot to. Chariot was a pretty good song, really. No, it was great. <laughs> it's a great song. I'm not. He's I'm a not two hit wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of is, but yeah, he kind of is. I don't know. Like that doesn't like that's not. You're not leaving that legacy behind. Like people, hundreds of years now aren't going to be like 100 running up a cherry tree. Yeah, like probably not. Just, just I don't want to be will be played at. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be anything <laughs> other than what I do. Yo, because the be cameras wedding, went out, like banger. Yo, it will be. Should we, yeah. uh, should we wrap this up? Sure, wrap it up. I think Tim's. Yeah, you got to come on again. Oh, dude, I'm there. I think this I think what, you'll be a you'll 100 be a recurring guest. Like when I don't have anyone to come on, no Vivian now just come on. Call Tim no, up. Vivian, I'll come like, off the bench. Dude, I'll be the, the we'll, sixth we'll man. Uber you up. We gotta stop. We gotta. We, he's yeah, just as good. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're amazing. You get yeah. You get a million dollars. You get fourteen million dollars. <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, Gavin DeGraw banger. By the way, we're giving you a million buco bucks before you leave. <laughs> Not real dollars. Buco dollars. <laughs> Tim, you got the buco dollars. Buco dolores. All right. Before we go, I just uh, I want to play this song that um, I think is a classic for life. Who sings it? Gavin DeGraw. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm, I'm over here thinking you're going to play one of mine. So did I. So did I. Oh, that's fun. So did I. Keep the All right, dude. I'm going with the Gavin DeGraw. No, no. Like, don't, don't put it. What song would you like me to play? I like... Uh, you got to choose, man. I'm a, we got to get, we gotta get the chorus, though, of this. Oh, yeah. No. We, now that this is on. Now this is on. We got to get the chorus. Okay, okay, gotta, okay. Yeah, I mean, I started through. off with yours. End it with his, too. I think yeah, I will end it with yours. Appropriate thing. Yeah. We'll but I'm going to give the people the chorus. Yeah, we got. can we all sing it? If you, whatever you know the words to. I wanna be anything other than what I've been trying to be lately. All right, that's enough of him. Let's go with. How about this one? Ooh. This is All Right, Feeling So Good by Tim Bernard. Your <laughs> boy that, in the chair. All Right, Feeling So Good on that jungle juice. In the gray chair. Yeah. It's that gray chair vibes. The third camera. Yeah, if I'm coming Fuck back. Fuck that camera, man. Hey, hey, hey. Just get a new one. Oh, you got it. If I'm coming back, I'm on that couch. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'll just... I'll keep on moving. Well, <laughs> yeah, just keep on. Just keep on moving. <laughs> it's just, just been musical chairs in it yeah, the whole time. Yeah. My whole life with Steve has been musical chairs. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm trying to fit you in a... <laughs> Fine. Fans are both guys. Like spending a square peg in a round hole. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. <laughs> Gotta loop me up, man. Loop yeah. me up and throw me in. Hey, thanks for listening, guys. Way to be, Tim. You said some great shit. Fran, great as always. Well done, everybody. Thanks for having me, guys. Of Juice, course, man. Deuces. Jungle juice. More than good. <laughs> it's great. Frosted flakes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Good stuff, guys. Yeah, that was fun, dude. That was, that was a good one. That's a trip. Like, that's like a fucking experience. That's cool. Yeah.